hello welcome back to my channel so when i suggested i might make this video a lot of you seemed really interested in me sharing my tips on how to care for small pets if you have a chronic illness or disability so i have chronic migraines endometriosis and also recently diagnosed with pots postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome so if I seem really out of breath all the time that's the reason behind that but that's really thrown a curveball into things it affects pretty much every single aspect of my life whether it's caring for myself working but also caring for the pets too actually at the time of you watching this I have just gone in to have surgery to remove my endometriosis so if I'm not very active in the comments that is why I'm in bed, someone else is likely caring for the pets, and I'm just over there dying and recovering, so that's why I'm not gonna be very active in the comments, but yeah. But back to the main topic of the video, I have had to make a few changes to the way I care for my small pets just to make things easier for me, whilst also making sure their needs are all still met, so I thought I'd make a video sharing my tips, just in case you're also watching this and you struggle with chronic illness, or disability maybe you're watching this and you don't have anything that currently affects the way you care for your pets but you never know I wasn't expecting it so just in case any of these things do happen it's always good to be prepared so I guess my first tip would be to check in with yourself make sure that you're not struggling too much and that's not starting to reflect on your animals care they're not missing out on feeding cleaning really important things make sure they're not missing out on that and I think if it is gonna be a long-term thing that does affect that, there is no shame at all in rehoming them if that's gonna be the best option for them and also the best option for you if it's causing you too much stress and they're not getting the things they need. So I guess that would be my first piece of advice. Take a look at the bigger picture. If you're not able to provide your pets with what they need, there is no shame in rehoming them and finding them a home that can provide them with their basic needs and also more than that. So if you feel like you're getting worse or you're not gonna make any progress in the next few months, there is no shame in rehoming your pets. I think the problem does come in when people rehome say their mice because they don't have time for them and then the next day they go and get a hamster. That to me doesn't make sense, but if you're genuinely struggling with your pets, you can't care for them, no shame in rehoming them and finding them a home that can provide them with what they need. But I do think generally pets, especially small pets, are really good for people that are struggling, whether it's with your mental health or a physical health issue. They can really give you that kind of get up and go attitude where you have to get out of bed, you have to force yourself to be up and doing things and active and feeding them, watering them, playing with them. They are so good for your mental health. So I do think having small pets does have its benefits and it can be a really good thing for you. But I just thought I would share some tips on caring for small pets, specifically the ones I've got, so rats and mice, when you've got any sort of chronic illness because although I don't want any more pets at the moment, I am focusing on the ones I've already got and I would recommend if you are really struggling, don't add any more animals into the mix. Try to focus on the ones you've got at the moment and I wouldn't really recommend adding any more to that if you're really struggling. So when it comes to general tips and advice, number one, don't beat yourself up too much. I know it's really easy to look at people that have perfectly good health, they seem to be running around and doing all these fun things with their pets and spending so much time with them. For us that's just not possible sometimes, so don't be too hard on yourself, especially if you have social animals like rats and mice. As long as they have that social company of their own species, that is the most important thing and any attention from us is a bonus. As long as they have all of their basic needs met, if they're fed, watered, warm, they have social company if that's what they need, they have some sort of enrichment, don't be too hard on yourself on a bad day if that's all you can achieve. So when it comes to feeding the pets, one of the things I found that really helps me, and this is specific to me making my own food, is I have a big massive container and I'll bulk make their food, I'll make a couple of months worth on a really good day and then I don't have to do it again. I also make sure I have frozen vegetables in the freezer for them because sometimes you just can't get out to the shops and buy fresh stuff and that's perfectly fine for animals like rats and mice. Make sure you have some sort of frozen veg whether it's peas or sweet corn. These can also be great enrichment for them. You can just chuck them in frozen into a water bowl or a dish and leave them to it. One of my biggest pieces of advice for really intelligent animals like rats and mice, make sure your cage is packed full of foraging toys. 
even on the worst days, some of these are really simple to just fill up. And to us, it's really simple, it takes us a few seconds, but to them, that provides them with so much enrichment that you don't necessarily have to be involved with. So I always recommend having a cage full of foraging toys because even if you're not able to give them outside of the cage attention, if you're having a really bad day, they still have enrichment in the cage and you don't necessarily have to be involved in that. So foraging toys are a must. I'd recommend them for pretty much any relatively intelligent animal. So the mice, the rats, they have a variety of different foraging toys and I can just fill them up and don't feel too guilty about stepping back and not spending as much time with them. So free roam time for the rats I'd say is one of the most challenging things for me at the moment. Sitting down on the floor is quite painful sometimes and also having to quickly stand up if the rats are on the windowsill or on my desk getting something they shouldn't do. They get in all the places, they just know that I don't want them to be and that is quite challenging because if I stand up really quickly, I also go back down really quickly and I've passed out in here a few times having to stand up and grab something really quick so that has been quite challenging. I'd say free roam is one of the trickiest things at the moment. So a few things I recommend to make life a bit easier when you're trying to free roam, get them some sort of ladder or step stool they can get out of the cage themselves because standing there and trying to fish all of the rats out of the cage and persuade them to come out for free roam is quite energy consuming so giving them that choice to go back and in and out if they want to with a ladder or something, I'll link some really good ones in the description, just make life so much easier. Secondly, give yourself somewhere nice to sit down or lie down. I usually just lie down in here and let them climb over me like a jungle gym, but you could also lie on your bed and put a blanket down for the rats and use that as your free room area, but I'm looking for a really nice chair at the moment that's cheap, comfortable, and also pee-proof from the rats, so if you know of any good, comfortable chairs that are washable, please leave those in the comments because I could really do with it. I also do really recommend working on your free room area to make it as rat proof or pet proof as possible. Make sure any wires are covered, make sure they can't really jump on anything they shouldn't be jumping on because that's one thing I really need to work on in my next pet room is making things as basic as possible and as rat friendly as possible because this also doubles up as my office and things can't quite be as rat proof as I'd like them so I really need to work on that in the new pet room just to make things easier for me to stop me having to run around after them, stop them from doing stuff and having to jump up really quick. So when it comes to cleaning their enclosures, I imagine this is probably the area that most people tend to struggle with. It takes the most energy, it takes a lot of your time, so I do recommend a few tips on how to make cleaning and stuff easier and just general cage management a lot easier. One thing you could consider is going bioactive with your small pets, whether it's mice, rats, hamsters, whatever you've got. I am going to possibly try to go bioactive with the mice in my new house just because I think it's going to be really interesting to see if it does make any improvements. Having a bioactive setup with a cleanup crew to do most of the cleaning for you, it is a bit tricky to manage and get the hang of, but I think long term it might make things a bit easier. So one thing I do really recommend, and I recommend this anyway just for enrichment purposes, but if you've got anything, whether it's a rat, a mouse, a hamster, hamsters especially, have to have a deep layer of bedding, but the more bedding you've got, the more absorbent it is for their pee, and you don't have to clean it as often, so having more bedding is really beneficial to you because you're not having to do weekly cage cleans, you can leave it to about a month to clear out all of that substrate in the bottom, so in theory this should make things a lot easier for you. One thing I do recommend is trying to limit how much fabric you're using in the cage. I would recommend this anyway, not using fleece and stuff, but especially if you're really struggling to manage things and clean things, you don't need to be changing five hammocks and a bunch of fleece every couple of days. That's gonna be really straining on you, so I recommend limiting how many hammocks you've got in the cage. My boys are down to just one hammock, which is fine. They don't really miss them. They all sleep in one hammock together. So unless you've got lots and lots of rats, they don't need to have five hammocks to pee in and make the ammonia in the room build up and cause you too much stress. So limiting how much fabric you've got in the cage should make things easier too. One thing generally I'd say is try to limit how many little nooks and crannies they've got to pee in. If you've got one specific toy in the cage that they tend to pee on, they make it stink even after you just wipe this. Take it out, that's fine, I've had to do this with my boys. 
they had like a green ikea shelf thing i would wipe this i'd come back and they had covered it in pee again so they are banished from having that in the cage they still got it outside of the cage but it was just getting too much too much to wipe down especially considering that doesn't really give them any enrichment if it's just a house or something take it out swap it for something that's going to be a bit less trickier to clean things that have like gaps and stuff the pee gets soaked into just eliminate things like this from your setup it's going to make things easier and they're not really going to miss things that aren't super enriching like houses sputniks things like that try to make things easy for you that aren't going to really cause them too much stress if they don't have it one thing i have had to do which i may go back to using in the future if i'm feeling a bit better and my rats are a bit more hygienic is actually taking out their water bowl I do really like to give them the choice of a bottle or a bowl just in case either one of them stops working but my rats were just peeing and pooping in their water bowl literally after I changed it so if I was gone for a few hours not feeling good I really don't want them drinking water they pooed and peed in just a couple of hours prior so I have actually taken out their water bowl I might put it back in if they're a bit more hygienic in the future but it was just getting a bit too much and I really didn't want them drinking their own poo water so that's had to go obviously with this if you're not going to use a water bowl make sure you're constantly checking their water bottles make sure they're not getting blocked and they're still working they do have two to three water bottles at a time just in case any one of them gets blocked or stops working but for now just to make my life easier and to make their general health and hygiene better we have had to say goodbye to the water bowl they do still get access to fresh water in like bowls and stuff outside of the cage with pee fishing and things but it was just getting disgusting i've not had rats that pee and poo in fresh water that often so that's had to go one of my biggest pieces of tips my biggest tips when you're doing a big deep clean on the cage don't do every single task all in one day because you are going to burn yourself out so maybe pick one day to do the bedding take out all of the bedding and replace that then pick another day to rearrange the cage items or take them out and scrub them and clean them or soak them. Then another day to take out the hammocks, wash those and replace them. Don't try to do everything in one day because you are going to burn yourself out and then the next day you're not going to be good for doing anything. So make sure you're doing things spaced out and make sure you're giving yourself plenty of breaks. One of my biggest hacks that I wish I'd started doing sooner is when you get to the last piece of bedding when you're scooping, instead of like hunching over and trying to scoop the last remaining piece of bedding, just get yourself a really strong, powerful vacuum and just suck up all of the loose pieces of bedding instead of sitting there for ages trying to scoop things. It makes life so much easier. I also recommend, depending on your illness or your disability, get some sort of stool or something to sit on whilst you're there because hunching over or standing up for a long period of time trying to scoop the bedding and clean things is not going to be good and you are going to lose your energy pretty quick so get some sort of stool or something to sit on and just take things easy. One thing that I'm definitely doing in the new house and I've always always known I wanted this is having hard flooring I can sweep and mop and make things easier having to drag around a big heavy vacuum cleaner and hoover in here pretty much every day is not good it hurts my back it makes me super tired and hot and sweaty so i can't wait to have hard flooring and i recommend if you do have the choice with pets that have loose bedding don't get carpet it is just a nightmare save yourself the stress of having to vacuum every single day just get a mop a broom and you're sorted so definitely something that I cannot wait for I'm so excited I never thought I'd get so excited to pick and have hard flooring but here we are so to end on I thought I'd just share some general tips that I've got generally about caring for your pets the first one that I found really helpful was having a care guide for every single species you've got whether it's my land snail my stick insect they all have a care guide which is stuck and printed on the wall, we're not printed, I've handwritten it, but just in case in the event that you really are bedridden, you can't get out, you can't do your daily routine with your pets, or God forbid you end up in hospital unexpectedly, having a care guide, whether it's in a folder or obviously in the room for people to see, have that just in case someone else has to take over your care and you want them to do it exactly how you do. So this is something that I've done for every single animal I've got, even the millipedes, they need misting on a regular basis. So especially with me going into hospital, when you're watching this, 
I'm not going to be able to get up out of bed to care for the pets, but I still want things doing my way, I still want them getting cared for exactly how they're meant to, so even down to exactly how much food they get, write down every single detail, give this to people you're close to, and make sure your pets can still get cared for in the event that you're not able to. One thing that I also find really helpful is having a monthly calendar. Print this out at the start of the month and plan out every single piece of pet care. I suffer really badly with brain fog. If I didn't write things down when I've done them, I would have no idea when I last cleaned out the rats or the mice. So I'll also take a picture just generally of the cage after I've cleaned it. And then I can go back in my phone and look for the picture and the date and the timestamp of when I did that to know when it next needs doing. So print out a calendar, plan every single thing even down to the vegetables for the snail, he has a specific vegetable day and the rats and the mice get their spot cleaning, their monthly cleaning all down on the calendar which really does help. Especially when you're really not feeling good if you can just come in and see the calendar on the wall and see okay today is the day that I need to give Orbit her calcium and her food or today is the day that I need to do a spot clean. Even if you're not going to stick to this exactly on the day, you can still be held accountable, look at this and know that, okay, that needs doing, I'm either going to do this now or possibly push it back to tomorrow, but you've still got all of the things written out, even if you're feeling super terrible and really unwell, you can just come in and see what needs doing and get it done. Also, don't be trying to do all of your big deep cleans on the same day or even the same week. Space them out if you have multiple different small pets. So for me, I'll try to do the mice maybe at the beginning of the month and then maybe the rats towards the middle of the month just to space things out so I'm not exhausting myself trying to scoop massive loads of bedding and pick up the bedding. Although at the moment I cannot lift the big bags of hemp, I do have to get help with that. But don't be trying to do all of your deep cleans all in one day or week. Space them out. You will really thank yourself for doing that. Also, if it helps, set yourself a timer. So five o'clock, I will set myself a timer and say I'm free roaming the rats. Right now, no matter how I feel, I'm gonna get up. Even if I'm lying here half dead on the floor, they still get outside of the cage time where they can run around, interact with their different toys and stuff, even if I'm not very interactive. So set yourself a timer, hold yourself accountable, and that should hopefully help too. But generally, in summary, I'd say making sure your cages are super enriching for them. The most enriching cages are usually ones that, once they're set up, although it does take a lot of time to get things right and get things set up, once they're already set up, they are the easiest cage, I find. I've had smaller cages for my mice and my rats. They needed cleaning more regularly and they weren't really that enriching. I found those more time consuming than the enclosures I've got now. So, although it takes time and energy at the start, Hopefully if you can come up with a way to make them enriching, but less time consuming for you, that's gonna be the best thing you can do. Also doing big tasks either in bulk or trying to spread them out as much as possible and ask for help if you need it. I know that when I was asking for tips and suggestions to do this video, a lot of them were get someone to help you, get someone else to care for your pets, but not everyone has that option. I know personally if I couldn't care for them, then no one else is gonna be giving them the exact same care that I do. So it's not an option for everyone to have help, but if you do have help available and you're not afraid to ask, please ask for help because it is super helpful to have someone else just to help you with heavy things or big tasks It can make such a difference to your overall energy levels. So if you do have help available, ask for it. Also plan and make care guides and calendars and things to hold yourself accountable, but also in the event of an emergency or something happening to you, people can easily step in and replicate that. I know probably if I had to go away for a long time, people could probably just watch my videos, but I have also written down care guides that are relatively easy to follow and in a way that I'm happy with, if I did disappear, my pets would still get the exact same care, hopefully. And lastly, be kind to yourself. I know it's super easy when you're lying in bed and you're not feeling very good to beat yourself up about not spending as much time as possible with them, but as long as their basic needs are met, please don't be too harsh on yourself. You're trying your best and you're gonna get there. So that is it for today's video. If you have any more tips for anyone in the comments on how to care for small pets with chronic illnesses or disabilities, that would be really helpful. But don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.